It's 1999 and everyone's talking about the internet revolution. Companies with no revenue are worth billions of dollars. Just adding .com to your name could double your stock price overnight. And right now, we are watching the exact movie play out with AI. OpenAI is burning through $44 billion with no clear path to profitability. Big tech has committed $32 billion to AI infrastructure this year alone. To say that the scale of investment into AI isn't sustainable would be the understatement of the year. And when the reality hits and the bubble bursts, there's going to be a massive collapse. I'm Suleiman, I've been in tech for over a decade, and today I run my own businesses in consulting, software, and education. What I'm about to show you isn't just about the AI doom and gloom, it's how smart engineers who understand what's really happening behind the scenes can actually position themselves to get rich in the AI collapse. Right now, there's no real pressure to make AI investments pay off or even be profitable. The sheer volume of AI funding is insane. VCs are throwing billions at anything with AI in the name. Big tech is committing $32 billion to AI infrastructure, and the US government is pouring $500 billion into Project Stargate. It's just like the post cough boom, when the stock prices of companies like Zoom, Teladoc, Peloton, and Etsy were exploding based on what was seen as a new reality at that point, as well as future growth. Back then, it was growth at all cost. Profitability didn't matter as long as you could show user growth and the future potential. But when Jerome Powell started raising interest rates at the end of 2021, that narrative changed overnight. By 2022, investors weren't asking the question of how fast are you growing anymore? They were asking, what's your profit? What's your bottom line? Where's the actual return on investment? And companies that couldn't answer those questions saw their stock prices collapse. I mean, just look at the fallout of Peloton, T-Dog, Beyond Meat, Zoom, Etsy since the bubble burst. And as they say, History doesn't always repeat, but it rhymes. And the same thing is going to happen with AI. Right now, AI profitability isn't of a massive priority for most companies. They're getting funding based on future growth potential and promises. But at some point, and it always happens, there's going to be a black swan event that changes everything overnight. Maybe it's a market correction. Maybe it's just investors getting tired of funding promises with no returns. Maybe it's something else. And when that happens, the conversation conversation will shift from how innovative is your AI to how much money is your AI actually making. Because right now, here is what's actually happening. Every CEO is under extreme pressure to deliver on AI. They don't even know what it means. They are scrambling to get features and products out, leveraging AI just so they can show shareholders that they're doing something. And since ChatGPT launched, mentions of AI workflows and AI agents on company earning calls has skyrocketed, increasing by nearly 800%. Look at Y Combinator right now. They're literally just funding ChatGPT wrappers, slap on an AI interface and call it revolutionary. Engineering teams scrambled to add AI features without understanding the real implications. Just look at McDonald's. They recently deployed an AI chatbot for job applications. And security researchers found that they could access personal information of over 64 million applicants by simply using 123456 as a password. This perfectly illustrates the problem. Companies are rushing to deploy AI features to stay competitive, but they're moving so fast that they are overlooking basic security principles. And the numbers back this up. 61% of organizations experienced cloud-related security incidents in 2024. That's up from just 24% from the previous year. Companies are deploying AI systems that are fundamentally broken from day one. But nobody wants to admit it because the funding keeps flowing as long as they can say that we have AI or AGI. The technical debt being created is enormous. And when reality hits, the conversation will simply just change overnight. Investors will realize that 80 5% of AI projects are failing to deliver. But companies are planning to increase AI spending by 92% in the next three years. Most AI implementations aren't working, but 92% of companies plan to increase the spending in the next few years. This isn't sustainable. And when that correction happens, companies are going to need engineers who can actually fix the mess that they've created. And that's when the desperation hits. That's when companies are forced to care about making AI investments actually work, be profitable, and not overlook security principles. The engineers who understand how to solve these fundamental problems are going to be in incredible demand. And if you want to prepare for this collapse, 
you need to look at where and which businesses have the most pain right now. Where are they feeling the most squeeze? Who specifically is struggling? Where do they have dangerous blind spots? I personally see three massive areas, starting with number one, the security crisis. Now look, companies are moving fast with AI and breaking everything in the process. Employees across departments are connecting internal systems directly to ChatGPT and sharing their sensitive customer data with open AI. But there's a bigger issue. Companies are building AI systems as fast as as possible to get features out to the public. They are treating security as an afterfall, something to worry about after that they've been breached. And by that point, it's simply too late. Number two is data chaos. Companies are drowning in customer data with no way to make sense of any of it. This is specifically a problem for smaller companies and startups. For example, an accounting firm might have 10,000 customers, but they don't understand what to do with all the customer data or have the technical know-how to extract the value from the data. Customer information is scattered everywhere and they simply need an AI engineer who can come in and unite all of that customer data to extract the real business value from it. Like building tailored solutions or services based on each customer's revenue profile. The ultra wealthy individual making millions will have a completely different needs than someone earning $100,000 a year. But right now, these small businesses simply can't segment their customers effectively because their data is a mess and they don't have the know-how, which means that they're treating every single person the same way and missing on massive revenue opportunities. Number three, startup AI disasters. Small businesses and startups are getting completely screwed trying to build real AI capabilities on their own. A SaaS startup wants to add AI features to their existing product. But here is the problem. They are running lean teams focused on their core business and product development. They don't have the time to figure out proper AI implementation, nor do they have the money to hire a great AI engineer. They either end up following inefficient processes, copying to tutorials from the internet and implementing AI features in ways that can create massive technical debt. Or even worse, they end up not implementing any AI features, risking their company's future and competitiveness. Small businesses need engineers who can build real AI capabilities, proper implementations that actually enhance their product or improve their end user experience. Now, you can't do this with low-code, no-code, NAN tools. All of that is complete BS. So, if you want to position yourself for this opportunity as an engineer, here is exactly what you should do. Step one, pick your pain point. Look at the business pain points that I've outlined and start building your expertise in solving that specific problem. Pick one and go deep. Step two, evaluate your current domain expertise. What area or niche do you have an unfair advantage in? What do you know more about than anyone else? If you've worked in healthcare, finance, e-com, telecom, use that to your advantage. Combine your existing domain knowledge with the business pain point that you choose. Step three, pitch your solutions. Find companies in your domain that are simply struggling with your chosen pain point. Offer to solve their specific problem for free or only on a results basis. This removes all the risk for them and lets you prove that your approach works. Step number four is document everything. Create detailed case studies of how you solve their problems. Write about the specific challenges that you've encountered and how you overcame them. Then from that, you want to build content around your domain expertise and the business problems that you're solving. Step number five, you want to scale your expertise. Once that you've proven your approach works with multiple case studies, you want to start charging premium rates. The key is positioning yourself as an engineer who solves expensive business problems in your specific domain. Someone who understands both the technical challenges and the business context. Now look, the AI bubble is going to burst. Maybe not today, maybe not next month, but it's definitely coming. And when it does, companies will suddenly care about making their AI investments actually work. And if you are in tech right now, you have a choice. You can keep playing defense or worry about being replaced by AI, or you can start playing offense, building your skill set and expertise in order to position yourself as the engineer and that startups need right now. Good luck.